It's Wednesday, December 21st, and that means it's time for another episode of Eckler's Edge. Joining me, obviously, his name's in the damn show, as always, is LA Chargers running back Austin Eckler. Austin, buddy, what's going on? Oh, uh, just chipping away, man. Just chipping away <laughs> through life, football, everything. Uh, looking forward to another great episode, though. How about yourself? No complaints here, man. Um, you know, I, I, I've really enjoyed this season. Uh, it's been fun. It's been fun doing this show with you. We've been doing the podcast, all the things that are going on. And the football, I think, has really been good this year. But I, I got to admit, I have a little bit of let's get through this week a little bit. Let's get to Christmas. You know, uh, let's hmm. get that in the past. And then we move on to the new year and we keep it moving, man. So uh, but otherwise, I'm doing great. I did want to uh, tell you, though, really enjoyed the social Pro Bowl video that the Chargers made, and not just because they featured uh, our Josh Allen interview from Eckler's Edge in the video, but that was uh, absolutely awesome. Just uh, perfect stuff by them. The Chargers social media team is absolutely crushing it. How much of a hand did you have in, in that? Because uh, it was so, people loved it. Yeah, I had no idea that was being done. And one day, you know, our social media team came up to me, and they're like, after practice, they're like, hey, uh, also we have a fun video for – for you for uh, Pro Bowl voting. Uh, can you watch it real quick? It's like a political kind of campaign. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll see what the heck this is. So they already made this entire thing. So they spent a bunch of time yeah. before even asking me. Um, and then sure enough, they showed me. I thought it was epic. And they're like, all right, we just need you to say, like, you you approve this message to kind of, you know, cap it off. And so I was able to cap it off. And then they sent it out there. I got so much great feedback from that. People were loving it. So, yeah, it was it was an epic video. Yeah, shout out to the Chargers social media team for that. Uh, I love the, you know, is it because he's too blue collar? Is there a big <laughs> school bias? That was great stuff. So shout out to them for that. Uh, yeah. Before we jump into recapping Chargers Titans and a big show, we got a big show here today. We got Antonio Gates. I know you just saw him last night. We're, we're having him on the show later. Uh, we have some fantasy this or that uh, debates because it was mm. playoff time, Austin. We got to help some mm. people out. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to do. Um, but before we do all that, Talk, talk to you about the signed uh, signed jersey giveaways and, and how much longer that's still going on. Yeah, man. We got two more weeks of the signed jersey giveaways here coming up to the finals um, of fantasy football. So, yeah, same as always. Uh, make sure you tag me um, in a picture of me being on your fantasy football lineup. Um, if you're out because you lost, then better luck next year. Uh, but for everyone that's still playing... Um, you guys still have a chance to tag me in in, on Instagram or on Twitter to let me know that you have me on your fantasy team, which will automatically enter you in for these last two weeks. All right. Well, people better get in on that. Only two weeks left. Chargers 17, Titans 14, Austin. Um, It's kind of funny, you know, coming into into the game last week on the show, I told you about how the Titans have this great run defense. Obviously, you guys know that, uh, but their pass defense has been a little more susceptible you know, Herbert ends up getting 313 yards, but you were in, you were pretty efficient on the ground. You know, uh, all, all things considered, uh, 12 carries, 58 yards. You had a couple badass runs there uh, to to down in the scoring uh, area. You ended up being the rushing touchdown when they needed it. Um, tough game though between two quality teams there. It was it, it was back and forth, man. Shout out to both defenses for stepping up. Um, yeah, like you said, it was it was a battle. It was a battle for sure. We knew that. We knew it was going to be a physical game for us offensively. And, you know, Justin came out slinging it, doing what he does best um, and keeping us going forward. You know, there's two, I think, big turnovers that really put us behind of having a, a more, you know, dominant performance on offense. The one obviously before the half which was insane. It was just like an incredible play, you know, like have you guys, ever seen anything like that before? I have seen that before, but it's been a minute. So it was just like, wow. Yeah. yeah guys still making great plays where he's out of bounds, jumps, throws it back to his own teammate for a pick in the end zone. Right. We're about to kick a field goal to go into half. Like, come on. <laughs> um, and then we had one, right. Another turnover right on the fringe, which really uh, hurt us. So, you know, defense stepped up, but yeah, we were able to fight and just just get enough there at the very end. Jay Herb doing us, uh, doing what he does best, man, giving us a chance at the end, and Mike Williams making a big play, and then Dicker the kicker putting it through the uprights to seal the deal. Dicker the kicker, baby, he's been pretty clutch <laughs> this year so far uh, since he popped yes. in for was was Hopkins. His last game was the one where he he got the overtime. Yeah, uh, game win. win it. Yeah, game winner. Against Denver, yeah. Denver, right. yeah. And so, yeah, D-Hop was, was killing it for us. 
obviously got injured. Then we brought in Taylor. Then he got injured. Then we brought in Dicker. And Dicker's been, I mean, I'm just like, that's that's a hard decision. Like, if if these guys get healthy, like, I'm glad I'm not the GM. <laughs> yeah, no that. kidding. Hey, that's, a, that's, above, that's above your pay grade. You yeah. don't got to worry about that one, man. Uh, but yeah, this the Titans team, I guess from the outside, you know, you can tell me if this is true. Just seem like a bunch of like badasses there on defense, man. They play so hard. And obviously Derrick Henry gets his on the other side, 21 carries over hundred yards. Still keep saying this, love the way they have him involved as a receiver, four catches, 59 yards. That guy's like as terrifying as he is, as a running back, having him out there catching Austin Eckler style screens or like in the flat stuff like that. Talk about scary in the open field, but defensively feels like a unit that doesn't get talked about enough among the best defenses in the NFL. But Mike Vrabel always has those guys playing physical and, and playing hard. What was that unit like on on Sunday? Yeah, they're big, they're big and just disruptive up front. Um, and you you can see that when you watch the film of them. There's as far as how they're trying to attack. They usually they have like one penetrator. Like it'll be one guy who's trying to penetrate and the guy slanting, you know, bringing off uh, edge pressure. So they're they're moving the front. They're mixing it up and they're always getting people in the backfield. Uh, our O line did a, did a solid job, you know, holding them down. Um, but still, you know, there's there's always those plays where it's like ah, like you got to make something happen in the backfield mm-hmm. or we miss a block on you know tight ends get, got a mismatch on a D lineman, and, um, and so really. When you get into these situations where you have a really good defensive front, you got to make sure that you're giving them a bunch of different types of looks. You know, you're you're moving the pocket, you're chipping them, uh, you're you're doing some some play action and booting outside of them. You just got to make them play a complete football. You can't just let them sit there and rush up the field every single play. Um, and then obviously in the run game, um, you know, like I said, they're big and disruptive inside. So that's I think why their run game has been or run game defense has been as strong as it has been. Um, but yeah, you know, that's why we have, you know, run and pass. And so we were able to exploit yeah. it more so in the passing game and move the ball down the field when we needed to, um, and just did just enough, uh, to, to pull out that win. Well, it wouldn't be a chargers, uh, game if it wasn't slightly yeah. stressful. You know? Exactly. Wouldn't, wouldn't exactly. <laughs> that's how we like to use every minute of the game yeah. to make it entertaining. You, yeah, hey, listen, the NFL is probably thankful you've got folks, especially on all these primetime games you got, you got folks dialed in until the very last minute, the ratings, you guys are very concerned, very concerned and very thoughtful about the ratings in particular. You want watch time is very important to the LA Chargers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's not something we preach, you know, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the way it is, you know, I don't prefer it, but it just happens. And so now I've just grown to expect it. I expect it to be a fight all the way to the very end in our games. You know, I wish we had, you know, a two touchdown lead with like two minutes left. You know, that that's ideal, but that's not realistic in our scenario. Um, and so guess what? We're a, a gritty group of guys. We're going to keep fighting all the way to the end. That's all we know. That's all we've done because that's been our situation. So I think it's actually better for us in the long, in the long term. Yeah, it definitely fortifies you for the long term. Well, this is just goes to show you how the NFL is, always moving, always changing, and you can never really predict things because the Chargers now sit as the AFC's sixth seed, depending on what outlet you look. And I'm sure you guys aren't dialed into 538's playoff rankings or like this mo- playoff model, this type of stuff. But, you know, depending on what the outlet you look at, the Chargers have like an 80% chance to make the playoffs now at this point. It feels ve- like the vibe feels pretty good right now compared to where we were maybe like two weeks ago, something like that. Or at least maybe that's how we feel on the outside looking at the Chargers. Um, you got three games left. Colts, Rams, Broncos. We'll see if you can, uh, again, no disrespect to any team there. And you always say paper doesn't play football. You guys play football. But there should, maybe you might be able to get a comfortable win in there somewhere. Um, Maybe, maybe. I I can never say that because I've been (laughs) a part of team. I've been a part of games where it's like, man, these guys are struggling in the year and we've actually lost the game. And so it's like, I've I've learned that lesson. I'm not going back down that. We got to show up. We got to play. That's a good point because you guys had that game against the Texans last year. And to the Texans credit, man, I keep saying this, like people are shocked that the Texans this year have, they took the Chiefs to overtime the last week. They, they, they took the Cowboys to the brink the very end the week before that. It's like, look, people might be shocked by, but like, watch the games. I I, I'm telling you, those guys in Houston are playing their asses off. Like nobody's thinking about the golf course. Nobody's thinking about vacation. They're thinking about like, how hard can we hit? the guys on the on the Chiefs how hard can we beat I mean because they've beat up two teams so that's a great point by you Austin um what matters is what actually happens on the field but both sides are getting paid to play the game 
You know, right. so no one, no one's really taking it off. You can't, you literally cannot afford to take it off because that will be your representation of you as a player or in you as an organization. Um, and so you, there's always pressure to, to continue to finish the season um, for for good reasons too, right? We want to keep this competitive for everybody. Um, and so yeah, it's it's the NFL, man. Any, anything can happen. <laughs> Uh, last I mean, thing before, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Good. I was gonna say anything can happen, and then I was gonna. I just remembered the uh, the Raider game. Like, well, that's exactly anything can what happen. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> Literally anything can happen. Because um, I was that was gonna be the last thing I talked about before we move on to the the fantasy debates. Is, bro, that Raiders game. Look, obviously, it's been talked about ad nauseum how outrageous that is. Um, you know this. The Patriots, this disciplined, situational football team, I mean, fumbles the bag in the biggest possible situation in the most outrageous way. What was your reaction to one seeing that? I obviously didn't see it live. You guys were playing, but seeing it later on. And two, like that's not only was it crazy, but it was crazy helpful to the Chargers playoff odds getting the, the, the your your division yeah. foes beating the Patriots that yeah. way. That, I mean, it was good for the Chargers. That was great. Great yeah. scenario for the Chargers. <laughs> Um, obviously bad for the Patriots like that that's might be the worst way to to lose a game um just yeah. just saying just like it's it's over mm-hmm. like it's going to overtime and man like oh feels bad for those guys um but uh, like I said it was good for the Chargers but yeah I was just in awe like we were talking about it after the and everyone's like hey do you see this do you see this and I'm like well, okay what the heck's going on it's like no flipping way like what the heck like it just seems like it just seems like why would anyone ever do that? It's one of those scenarios, you know, where it's, it's like, like a brain can't fart. Really, can't really get your mind around it. Like what just happened? Um, and I'm sure, yeah. I mean, obviously it's a learning experience for all of us. Um, let's, let's learn from their mistakes. Um, but man, yeah, that's, that's, it's brutal. Yeah. Especially it's brutal to lose. And then to have your quarterback be literally stiff armed into the dirt by a guy who used to play for you and Chandler Jones and, that divorce and all that stuff. It, it's about the worst. Way. You play Madden at all? You you, you no. play Madden at all? I don't. Yeah, no. I mean, I I used to play all the time. I haven't played in like a decade at this point. But when I used to play Madden, if if I was on the other end of that, like, how hard would you throw the controller like across the room if that's the way you ended? You know, I mean, it'd be absolutely absurd. But good news for the Chargers. Good news uh, for you guys to to continue this playoff push. We'll, we'll obviously keep that dialed in, but that was a crazy moment that I don't think. Again, I, I said, like, have you ever seen anything like that Titans interception there in the Reds? I sure as hell ain't never seen anything like that Raiders. Anyway. Right. I would say that Raiders-Patriots scenario was was even crazier than the interception. Like, Oh, a, bi- a billion percent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. That was absolutely nuts. Oh, All right, man. Austin. We got some serious. That was fun. But we got some serious business to get down to. Ooh. It's fantasy football playoff time. So this was your idea to have a little bit of like this or that debate segment between a couple of guys here. So we're going to go through some quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. We're going to be pretty quick about these because, again, we're trying to get the people the information here. Let's start at quarterback, man, because let me tell you what. Jalen Hurts has carried people to fantasy football playoffs, right? Myself right. included. I had a first-round buy last week on my Jalen Hurts team. Like, we're going to... Yeah, we're gonna be good. We're going to be sailing into to week 16. We're going to be feeling nice. He's going to miss this week. Most likely he might even miss next week. So the people need some quarterback streamers mm. here. Mm. Debate number one, Austin, this or that. Who do we like better this week? Brock Purdy versus Washington. BCB has been on fire since he's taken over for um for for Jimmy Garoppolo, an injury there for the 49ers. He's got 71 percent completion rate the last two weeks, four to zero touchdown interception ratio or. Do we prefer Aaron Rodgers at Miami? Now, Rodgers is obviously the much bigger name. He's only had three-plus touchdowns once all year. He hasn't cleared 300 passing yards all year, which seems kind of outrageous. Do we like the big name or BCB uh, going into this week? Ooh, I feel like with, with BCB, you have the weapons, right? And then you, you yep. look at the alternative, and it's, it's the weapons aren't necessarily there, right? They're It's some guys that are trying to figure it out still or guys that have you know on the back end of their career. Um. Ooh, so I feel like the ceiling is with BCB, um, and that's what I'm. I, I'm gonna go with him. Uh, Who did yep. you say they're playing? The four, the four they're playing. They're playing Washington. Washington has a good defense. They definitely get after they you do? up front, but um, still, the, I just the Shanahan system is just makes it yeah. so easy for quarterbacks. And I mean, to, right. to Brock's credit, like he's just um, 
he's looked uh, he's looked real good. I'll tell you this, Austin. I I have a super flex dynasty league that I talk about on the podcast too much, according to Lord Podcast, uh, our producer John. Uh, but I actually started Brock over Rogers last week, and and I ended up winning. So I I'm with you that I kind of feel like how did Brock that play out? Answer. How did it play I, out? I won. Oh, I mean, point wise, I I won going into last night, so I didn't even yeah. check uh, like okay. who who did better. But um, yeah. Brock was great. He had 22 points uh, and was a big part of. Um, unfortunately, I was actually I was going against uh, Justin Herbert, and so I was kind of mm. pleased that Herbert didn't throw any touchdowns against the uh, against the Titans because uh, that, that worked <sighs> I out wasn't, for me. I, I, I needed like I needed like four more points from him. I needed to catch so I needed to catch a ball. I had a ball doink off my head from him. Like if mm. I would have caught that ball, I wasn't looking yeah, soon I, enough. I did not think he was going to throw me that ball. I don't know if you remember that. I like, do remember that. Yeah, I was, I was wondering. This guy's about like that. right on top of me, and I'm starting to look back. So I'm thinking it's going to be like an over the top throw, and he put it on a back shoulder, like right, right on my back shoulder, doink right off the head dome. I was like, ah, oh, man. Uh, but anyway, it's one of those. It's one of those that unfortunately just looks worse than it is because yeah. like, you, know, you have to look for it afterwards. And yeah, makes, yeah, it's like doink fell, off fell, the dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fell for you, bro. It made 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 a made for yeah. a tough watch. But still, you guys got the <laughs> you guys got the win, and I got the fantasy win. Uh, Fifteen points <laughs> last week. For Aaron Rodgers, twenty-two point uh, seven for Brock Purdy. I- I'm with you that I think Brock is probably probably the answer here. If you're looking for quarterback help off the waiver wire, let's do another one here. Two guys that are are pretty widely available as well. If you're looking for Jalen Hurts help, Daniel Jones at Minnesota. Giants get the win on Sunday night last week. He's the quarterback eleven in fantasy on the year, primarily because he has five hundred thirty-eight rushing yards and five yeah. touchdowns. Uh, so that's great stuff. That thing. He's running that thing for sure. Minnesota been a super vulnerable defense. Um, Derek Carr, he's the other one, this or that debate we got here. They're in Pittsburgh. Definitely going to be a cold game on Christmas Eve. Carr is pretty close, quarterback 14 on the year. The Steelers, though, also a pretty gettable matchup, have allowed the fifth most explosive pass plays this year. Austin, are we feeling Derek Carr the passer or Daniel Jones the runner? Ooh, ooh. You said, who, who were the Giants playing again? They're playing the Minnesota Vikings, who have oh, been yeah, the um, Vikings. Man, been, I feel like Waller's back in the lineup. Um, you know, Devontae Adams. Wow, that guy's insane. Yeah, wow. uh, I'm leaning towards Derek Carr in this lineup. Um, the mm. passer um, against the Steelers, who have been have been struggling this year. Um, but I mean, the uh, this was close. The Vikings. I feel like in the last couple of weeks, man, I've been. You know, eh, but like, what the heck? You know, look, yeah. yeah, exactly, a little questionable. Um, obviously, they had an epic comeback. Um, yeah, that was sick. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go against. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Derek Carr. All right, you're this going week. Raiders there. I this is this one's very very close because yeah, having Waller just rip right up the right the gut there uh, on that passing touchdown that he had against New England, like that was pretty awesome to see. And it's like, oh right, I forgot the Raiders' offense has pretty much not been healthy at any point all year long. Um, it, it is very. T- I think I might go with Derek Carr too because the whole thesis of like targeting Minnesota as a defense is that you want to get big explosive pass plays on these guys because their secondary has been so vulnerable all year. But like, I, no disrespect again, Giants receivers are like Richie James and Isaiah Hodgins and these guys. That, that's been a banged up position for them all year. So I kind of feel like Derek Carr is the ceiling play. Daniel Jones, you know, you're just going to get like 40 yards and potentially a touchdown as a rusher, which is nice and safe in fantasy. But if you need that upside, I think Derek Carr could throw for three touchdowns on the Steelers defense. Mm, for sure. All right, we're aligned right. so far. Okay, I like it. I like we, it. So far, I, I, that will last one's close. This one's going to be interesting here. Let's go to running backs. You might know a thing or two about this position, so you should be able to help us here. Um, debate number one, this or that. J.K. Dobbins versus Atlanta. J.K. Dobbins has come back off injury and shockingly leads the NFL in rushing yards the last two weeks with 245, despite the fact that he's even publicly said, I don't look or I'm not, I don't have my explosiveness all the way back. Well, he has exploded for rushing yards this past couple of weeks. Or do we play James Conner versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Conner, Austin, he's played 91% of the team snaps since week mm. 10. That's that's five games. That's crazy. I mean, you're running back and you move off and on the field with, with Josh Kelly and, and Sony Michelle at different points of the season, too. 91% of the snaps. That's a lot of snaps. That is a lot of snaps. Um, that's a lot of snaps. And I feel like, you know, now, even especially with Kyler being out. Um, they're going to lean on him even more. Um, and so, yeah, I like I like James Conner in this matchup um, just because of the volume. It's like he's going to score a decent amount of points as long as he's yeah. on the field, which guess what? He's going to be on the field. Uh, who, who's their backup over there? 
Uh, they have they they cut Eno you know, Benjamin in the middle of the year, and then they have Keontae Ingram is their backup. Yeah. He's a rookie. Uh, by the way, like just in case James Conner gets hurt, you should be stashing Keontae Ingram. Although it's like they might play their third string quarterback this week. You know, Kyler injured. Colt McCoy got a concussion last week. Trace McSorley, yeah, Penn State's finest. Trace McSorley might be out there. I don't know. I'm I'm on the J.K. Dobbins side on this one. Uh, Falcons are a gettable matchup. J- Dobbins has been hot. Lamar may or may not be back in Week 16, but you know, sort of similar thing there that they got some guy. They got some problems in the wide receiver room there in Baltimore. They have pretty much all year long. They've been running the ball extremely well. I think this is a good matchup against Atlanta. Dobbins exploited a good matchup last week against the Browns, so I feel like he's the he's the guy for me here. All right, there we go. We got a little head a head to head. Nice. This one is really interesting here. The second running back debate I have picked for us. Jarek McKinnon versus the Seattle Seahawks, who got run all over by Christian McCaffrey predictably last week. Jarek McKinnon, I don't know if you know this, Austin, he is the running back one in fantasy in back-to-back weeks. The highest scoring running back in half PPR uh, fantasy the last two weeks. Pretty crazy stuff. Or, again, this is sort of a a name versus game uh, one here. Alvin Kamara at the Cleveland Browns. Kamara has not been... At his best all year long, uh, he but he did have 91 yards last week. That was his most since week six. And, you know, the Browns run defense is, is a mess right now. I think you guys had your best rushing performance this year against the Cleveland Browns. So do we go with big name, good matchup, or a guy who's been hot for a great offense in Jarek McKinnon? Ooh, ooh, that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> that is tough because I think Kamara is going to come alive versus the Browns. Uh, but it's hard to go against the, the Chiefs and their explosive offense and what. Yeah, I've been watching McKinnon, man. He, these past couple of weeks, I always watch the highlights uh, after every game, uh, mm-hmm. like the little YouTube highlights the NFL puts out. He looks and, great. Yeah, he's he's looking like a stud out there, man. Running hard, making plays happen. Mahomes is getting him the ball in creative ways. You saw the the th- the sideways huck, yeah, <laughs> um, that he took to the house. Uh, so he's looking explosive. So I think it's hard to go against that. Uh, I'm going to make them prove me wrong, and I'm going to go with uh, McKinnon for this one, uh, just for the consistency of, of the last couple games, but then just consistency of their offense as well. Yep, I'm going with McKinnon too. The matchup is is good for both guys, but listen, if you're going to sit there and tell me you can get invested, just take the names off the back of the jerseys, McKinnon, Kamara, and the resumes and all that stuff. You're going to get invested in a, a guy who – is involved in Patrick Mahomes' offense or Andy Dalton's offense. I, I think I'm going to go with the Mahomes offense. And also, weirdly, like David Johnson, who they just signed off the practice squad, the Saints, a couple weeks ago, is run more routes than Alvin Kamara, ran more routes than Alvin Kamara last game, which is like, Kamara's supposed to be the passing guy. Like, I don't right. know, very, very weird there. So I, I think I'm, I think we're both on the same page with this running back one. Um, let's do one quick receiver one here real quick before we jump to Antonio Gates. Cause I got to get a receiver one in this one. And this is interesting hmm. because I went into this and I picked these two guys because they're both playing on Thursday night. And I, all these guys are close in like early fantasy rankings, stuff like that. But we've got for our first side here, Garrett Wilson versus Jacksonville Jaguars on Thursday night. On the other side, uh, we've got Zay Jones at the New York Jets, uh, obviously, on Thursday night. The, another reason I picked these, I didn't know this going in, but the last since week 13, Garrett Wilson, who's a first-round pick, I think this guy is like going to be a superstar. He looks just different out there. He's a separator. He does everything well. He has a 23.3% target share since week 13 and five red zone targets. Zay Jones, who was kind of like a, they signed Zay Jones for how much money in the offseason type of guy? You know, he's on his third team. 23.3% target share since week 13. Five red zone targets. Exact same resume. So, Austin, do we go with the superstar rookie Man. with attached to a questionable quarterback in Zach Wilson or Zay Jones, who's been doing it with a guy in Trevor Lawrence who's on kind of the upswing there? Um, I'm a little biased because I got Zay Jones on uh, one of my fantasy teams. Uh, and hey, he's nice, been, pick by, nice pick up by you. Yeah, this man's been killing it the past, like, three, four weeks. Um they score in touchdowns, like getting red zone you know, opportunities, like you said, and putting it in the end zone. Um, and I, I actually had him on my bench this last week, and he scored like three touchdowns. A different story because I ended up losing Ooh. that game, and now I'm out. So. Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sick, man. I'm sick. <laughs> uh, so shout out oh, to Zay Jones for um, you know making me feel him on my bench. Um, but I'm gonna go with Zay, man, just because 
this this tear that him and Trevor Lawrence have been on together. I think they got some chemistry. I think they're going to keep going to him because he's been hot. So I'm going with uh, with Zay. I'm going to go against you on this one. I'll go with Garrett Wilson. And this might this might be a pure talent bias because I'm telling you, like Garrett Wilson, best among the rookies I've charted so far this year for uh, for RP. Best success rate versus man. Best success rate versus press. Guy just gets open at all levels. He's a stud. Better matchup against the Jaguars than Zay Jones going against a tough uh, Jets defense. So I'll go with Garrett Wilson. You go Zay Jones. Uh, we'll see. We'll see uh, very soon here on Thursday Night Football uh, who is right. But all right, Austin, we got to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Chargers legend, the great Antonio Gates, right after this. All right. Now, welcome to the show. Chargers legend. Antonio Gates. Antonio, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, what's going on? How you doing, man? Are you all right? I'm doing, doing all right. right. It's, it's good to have you on the show. You and Austin were just talking before we uh, before we got going. It was a great conversation about the uh, the free agent, the undrafted like chip you guys still have on your shoulder uh, and, and the bond of that. So that was pretty cool to hear. I wanted to share that with the listeners, too. Oh, yeah, man. I You know, I think what I understand and probably he understands as well, just, you know, the dynamic of what it is to kind of, you know, you hear that get it from the ground up. That's kind of like that free agent world. You really have to grind to get to the point where you actually get in the game. And you have to become from getting in the game to getting become the starter. Then you come from getting the starter to being a focal point of what we do offensively. And uh, I'm familiar with that, and he is as well. So, uh, but yet yeah, that doesn't it doesn't end at that point because exactly. the reality is that you still have that chip on your shoulder. I can be released at any time. I think that's what drove me for 16 years. Uh, the ideas that I never, it was like, no, you know, I wasn't no silver spoon. I wasn't no first rounder. I wasn't drafted. So no matter what I had done up to that point, year 10, year 12, year 15, in my mind, I came in as a free agent. And I think that's something that allowed me to flourish throughout my whole career. Yeah. It's just that I kept that with me. Yeah. And I'm along that same path. I'm in year six, but it's still, it still like stays with me. Like, like, Mm -hmm. We had to prove everything. We continue to have to prove ourselves every single year to show why we should be on this team and how much we can increase on our role and why we should. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm there with you, man. Well said. Well said. Yeah. I'm, I'm still chipping towards, you know, that year 16. You know, you know how it is. You take it one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, yeah, we're on the, we're on the same yeah. wavelength, man. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, yeah, it's a year six for you now. So I know when you're six, you go like, man, I got about three more years. That's kind of how I was. I was kind of doing it in court, like three year span. Like, okay. I got about, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting in. And I look up, I was at year nine. I was like, this is probably it for me. Yeah. And I was at year 12. I was like, you know, I'm probably going to retire next year. And I was like, year 15. I just, you just keep going, man. So, uh, uh, that's epic good that's thing, exactly man. how it yeah. is man that's yeah. straight up <laughs> yeah. straight up because you know, you'd be having those injuries and you'd be like dude i can get me man i'm about to go home yeah. family x y and yeah so you just look up and he, i look up and it was year 16 i'm like what yeah, you're you like know? man i don't know how I long only to do i can do it i only yeah. wanted to do 10 my goal was to do 10 i was like i just gotta get to 10 you know so yeah you're good, like man. man i don't know how much longer yeah. i keep doing this man uh but shoot so you've been out a little bit now right people don't know actually probably we played together for two years uh, and uh on StubHub dignity health center um Mm -hmm. now you've been out for a little bit have you been keeping up with with football the obviously the chargers Mm -hmm. um but Mm -hmm. how's your involvement been there well i you know i try to stay involved with with the team particularly our team and um more so than anything else obviously i if i'm looking at the schedule and I'm looking at the standings. I'm looking and watching the Jets now. So <laughs> I'm watching the Patriots. I'm yeah. like, okay, they got yeah. Yeah. the Riders. I'm with the Dolphins. <laughs> so I'm more inclined to what we're doing. And I kind of, my focus is on that. And then every blue mode, I watch football here and okay. there. But for sure, I watch every home yeah. game. I uh, watch all the Charger games. Yeah. And then I start watching teams that's, that can be possibly in our way, which is right. now I look at the Jets. I'm like, let me see who they got this week. Right. You know, right. no, they got to lose, lose. Yeah, that lose. was a crazy they, they game. Lose, lose, right? yeah, crazy yeah, game yeah. last week with but them. That was big. Yeah, that was huge. good for the that Chargers. For us, so. Good for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, as long as we take care of our business at this point now, nah, and yep. you know that you know we we in good shape now. Nah, we in the driver's seat. No doubt. Hey, no doubt. On that note, Antonio, we've been talking about this, uh, Austin and I, because you know I've been following the Chargers this year as well. Obviously, doing the show every week with Austin, keeping in tune uh, with the team, and gotta say, man. And Austin agrees with this. He says it uh, the same every week. It's a stressful bunch. It's a stressful uh, team. They, they they take every last minute. Uh, is it more or less stressful watching the team as a fan now and like rooting for them, or that, or was it more stressful playing? I think it's more stressful watching. 
because you have no. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I used to be a, like coach. Make throw me the ball. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? I, you get to a point where you feel like you can help, like physically help. When you watch it from the from the stands, it's just kind of like, oh my god, he missed that ball. I, I, I critique it at a different level than like the the your normal fan, right? Oh, wow, I'm up yeah. here watching the game, and I'm like, oh my god, if he hold that, if he hold that double team, like he can run through that hole. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I see it so differently. But I think watching it, I just have no control on nothing. Have mm. no input. I can just watch and see. And I can't help. And right. I think that's the competitive nature in me is that I want to go help. You know, right. especially when we get inside the 20. That's like my favorite part of the game. It's the red <laughs> zone. Downtown. And I'm like, shoot, man, I, I can't help. You know, you know, so and I and I watch the game and I'm just I'm coaching too. I'm like, listen, Austin has to get 20, at least 20 touches a game so we can win this game. <laughs> then I can, then I become a general manager. Right? And right, then I'm like, right. okay, we got to make sure we can, we need him for the postseason too. So don't worry about, I, I'm like all over the place, man, as a fan. So uh, you don't even know, man. I, I'm just all over the place. Uh, I love it, man. Fan. I love that. So uh, have you uh, ever dabbled in fantasy football? Curious. No, I, I never did. Never I just, played? I'm familiar with it. Never played, yeah, yeah, but I just, yeah. I'm familiar with it. Yeah, you, I'm just familiar been. with it. You would have been amazing to have on any team. You would have been definitely yeah. sought out yes. for in the first couple. Right, of let me <laughs> let me confirm. Let me confirm that as a big dork who's been playing fantasy since like uh, my sophomore year of high school. I had some Antonio Gates teams back in the day. What was a good pick? Was a good pick. Thank you. I appreciate that. But that's how I became uh, familiar with it because I would be literally just my you know my casual routine throughout a day, uh, all day on a Tuesday, and I did gas station. And uh, even though I was hurt and I had a boot on, I've, I've actually heard fans say something to me like, hey, are you playing this week? Because I got you on my <laughs> You know, so I would always hear the word fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, And then I just got familiar with it. Mm-hmm. And I just realized that was a big deal uh, in the sports world. Yeah. Uh, I never played personally. I just got familiar with it due, due to the idea of me just playing in the National Football League. Right. Yeah, it's uh, a massive deal, man. So that's why I've been kind of tapping in. That's why we got this show because people people get invested not only with their time but their money, right? And we got people's money mm-hmm. on the line. They care a lot more, you know. So uh, it's definitely a, a, another layer of the NFL that gives more exposure yeah. to all of us, right? I have so many fans yeah. from across the nation that aren't even Charger fans. Yeah, but they, they yeah. got me on their yeah. team, so they need me yeah. to do well. Yeah, yeah. Now that's how they re- and that's how they uh, they recognize you as well. Yeah. Like Austin Eckley, yeah, I had you on my fantasy team. Yeah. I never seen you, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. Antonio Gates, I never seen a, a day in my life, but I had you on my fantasy team. I know right. that name. Right. And then it, it makes them feel like they're involved too, right? Mm-hmm. Like in, in the game. And uh, mm-hmm. for us, it's not as great, though, to be honest with you. It's not as great because, you know, it can come to a point where guys are starting to feel like they're not, you know, helping somebody, fantasy team. And now all of a sudden, I remember like, being in the locker room and, and Melvin Gordon was just like, down because he hadn't scored and i was like dude please we're in the national football league we are very you know we're doing yeah. well i mean this yeah. is a, a great place to be so appreciate the game and so you know because yeah. fantasy fantasy owners can get really you can get tough you know how it yeah. is they can start posting stuff and like hey where has he been he's been missing i've seen you know <laughs> right. guys who hadn't played well so yeah, uh, I just try to balance that all out. It's, it puts to, a, you know, it's, yeah, it puts a false sense of reality. You know, it almost it, like out there, right? It's in the media. It's like this: oh, he hasn't scored, mm-hmm. but you still might be winning games. You're still, you know, putting everything out yeah. there on the line for your team. So it's not yeah. like you're not yeah. trying. Like you're you're trying, but yeah. they get that feeling because people are like, oh, he's doing this, this, that, and he's comparing you to other people, mm-hmm. not you know. So mm-hmm. I definitely feel that. And there's there's a lot of toxicity in the fantasy community. That's why we try to yeah. talk some positive light out here on the show. Um, cause yeah, it, it's really tough out there for, for players, you know, and you see guys that are about it, see guys that are not. And I get both sides of it hundred percent. Especially a guy like you, Austin, like you come in and you've had a great year. Another thing when you have a great year, like, you know, yeah. you score, at, you know, double digit touchdowns. Now you bring, you, you move up in the ranks in the fantasy. So now the pressure is like, okay, it's already hard to get in the end zone. Everybody knows that, right? It's a very difficult thing to do to get in the end zone when they know you're capable of doing it. So they game plan you, right? So now you mm-hmm. even more, you can get even more frustrated because you feel like you're not helping as much. But realistically, right. you are. Yeah. You got eight, nine guys in the box. You're allowing guys to throw the ball outside. Right. Now. So it's just, it changes. But yet you're not doing what they're expe- you know, the experts expecting you to do. Yeah, so now yeah. how do you feel? You know, because <laughs> yeah. you're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With, 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 you know, Justin and them are throwing the ball down the field and they got nine guys in the box. But is it like that? You know, you still in it. You got to still maintain I'm in a team game. Mm-hmm. The ultimate team game. I think that's where it gets hard for most players. 
And I think, you know, when you got guys in the locker room that knows how to lead, it helps you out a lot. Yeah, because sure. fantasy is not no, you know, no game. Yeah, listen, I think that's why on this show we try to go go beyond the box score from a performance standpoint and let you know that it's more than just fantasy points, but also talk to you guys as real people uh, and see what you're about in real life because I think that opens it up and, and gets rid of that toxicity. But, Antonio, before we get you out of here, uh, you're teamed up with Captain Morgan on celebrating the NFL Fan of the Year contest. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, Captain Morgan is doing a phenomenal thing, man, and they're, they're spicing things up in the NFL in terms of what they're trying to create. Uh, you know, obviously you have these fans throughout the whole National Football League who's very, you know, devoted to cheering and rooting for their teams, but yet in the community. And uh, I think and this is a great thing to have a platform, man, because, it, you know, believe it or not, those fans are, you know, people that get us going as well as players uh, on and off the field. And I think it's just a phenomenal thing that they are getting their just due. Uh, you got guys like, you know, Eureka, who's a fan of the year in Los Angeles, uh, you know, just to, you know, see his bio and just all the things that he do throughout the community, you know, the drives, the community, toy drives, charity events, uh, all with, you know, been tailgating since 2016. Mm. Uh, you know, I think it's time for people like that to, you know, start getting some recognition and which he is. So uh, it's a great thing to be a part of, man. And I, I finally, as a, you know, a former player, I get the chance to show my gratitude in terms of saying thank you to some of those guys who've supported me over the years and uh, interact with those guys and then. Great, unbelievable people, and uh, I'm glad that they're being a part of something that's giving them a platform that the rest of the world can appreciate. Yeah, and, and you know, just like I do, you know, with the, without the fans, right, our game doesn't exist at the level and the magnitude yeah. that it's at, right? And so not only that, but it also helps us carry out a legacy, right, because you've created memories that are instilled within these fans, right, that keeps in the Antonio yeah. Gates name alive, right? Yes, so like, let's, yeah, let's, let's yeah. give some appreciation to these people that are helping us yes, do that, man. helping us do these things in the sport and also when we're done playing with our careers. So heck yeah, good stuff. Man. I know, man. Good stuff. Great stuff, man, yeah. Hey, I can guarantee you there's a lot of people listening to this podcast that are like, oh, hell yeah. Antonio Gates won me some fantasy titles. They're very excited yeah. to be fans about yeah. Antonio Gates, just yeah. like they're fans uh, of Austin Eckler now. And, uh, you know, maybe one or two people listen to this appreciate yeah, hearing my uh, nonsense every single week. So, hey, appreciate <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, Antonio Gates, for joining the show. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Austin. Thanks, brother. I'll see you around. All right. Shout out to Antonio Gates. That was awesome. Austin, shout out to you. Another great episode, and we get to you know come back next week and see who was right about some of our debates, and and we'll do the same thing next week. Uh, we'll do some more week seventeen this or that debates, uh, and, and see how we see how this plays out, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious too. Uh, you know, people that are listening, which side they would take in either of those. Uh, so definitely let us know. And yeah, I'm looking forward to going head to head again next week. Um, it's always fun when we get to compete against each other and see how the boys play out. But yeah, appreciate you for this episode, man. Looking forward to next week. Yeah, no doubt. Listen, if you uh, agree with Austin on some of these picks or you agree with me, tweet at us uh, and, and let us know who, which side of these debates you're on between Garrett Wilson, Zay Jones, McKinnon, Kamara, Dobbins, James Conner. We were on the same side with the quarterback, so who cares? But uh, some of these ones we disagreed on. Let us know uh, who you agree with, and we'll do the same next week. I mean, it's going to be kind of tough if like Austin comes in here and just dunks on me on both these debates, and this is like supposed <laughs> to be my job. So that's going to be... I would say what I definitely couldn't do his job. We'll see if he if he could do my job. Let's uh let's, let's go with that. All right. On that note, you can follow Austin on Twitter or Instagram at Austin Eckler. You can follow me at Matt Harmon underscore BYB. Let us know uh, which side of these debates you fall on. And while you're there, make sure you're following at Yahoo Fantasy and don't forget to vote for Blue Collar Guy Austin Eckler for the Pro Bowl. Down with big school bias. Down with big school bias. I'll be back tomorrow with Dalton Del Don for another Stat Nerd Thursday. Until then, we're out.